Welcome back. President Biden in Northern Ireland today as tensions between China and Taiwan heat up. He is meeting with UK Prime Minister Sunak right now in Belfast, and he's expected to deliver remarks in about 30 minutes time on the Belfast Agreement from a local university. We'll take you there live should he get in front of the podium. Joining me now is former senior advisor to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Stevens Incorporated Executive Vice President, senior policy advisor there, Mary Kissel is with us. Mary, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, it's, it's great to be with you, Maria. Good morning. So much to talk about this morning. We've been talking about China. I want to get your take on Iran, but let's start here uh, with the president in Ireland. Your reaction? Well, it's interesting timing, Maria, because the Good Friday Agreement that the president is there to mark the anniversary of is essentially failing. Uh, Northern Ireland hasn't had a government in more than a year. They haven't had a budget. Um, they've lost EU funding. Uh, the U.K. prime minister struck a deal with the EU that there's a lot of concern over, that he might have accepted EU law over the territory of Northern Ireland. Um, so, you know, ironically, Maria, it's a time for, again, statesmanship from a U.S. president, but there's no indication that President Biden is there to help Rishi Sunak solve, solve some of those problems. So I think it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, and I also don't understand why you'd leave to go to Ireland with so much going on in the country today, in America. Uh, reporters are grilling Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin now on why it took so long for the government to identify the Pentagon document leak yesterday. Watch this, Mary. Got to get your reaction. Secretary Austin, you just said that you first learned about the leaked documents on the 6th of April. Um, they've been online for months. Why didn't U.S. intelligence, the rest of U.S. government, see that those leaked documents online for all those months? Is that an intelligence failure? They were somewhere in the, in the web, uh, and, uh, and where exactly and who had access uh, at that point, uh, we, we don't know. We simply don't know at this point. Wow. Fox News defense and intelligence sources say that the leak may have come from outside the Pentagon, Mary. But, I mean, this, this seems wildly inept. We have no idea how they got there and where they got there. How damaging was this leak? Yeah, well, uh, uh, somewhere in the web, Maria. <laughs> it's I, it's, it's very disturbing. It, it is amazing. I mean, uh, I, I, there are several disturbing aspects to the story. The first is what you point out, that it, it seemed to surface in January, and uh, the U.S. Intelligence Committee didn't know about it for months. Um, but secondly, I don't think we know if this is a leak um, or a hack. Those are two very different problems. They're both very serious problems. And thirdly, um, you know, I, I used to have the, the top clearance uh, in the U.S. government to read these kinds of materials. And I'm telling you, it's really hard to print out top secret material. It can only be physically printed in certain locations, and it's often brought into secure facilities for the recipient to kind of, you know, sign off on, read, and then hand it back. Uh, so there have been reports that, you know, some of these materials look like they have been photocopied and folded up. Mm -hmm. I don't know how somebody does that, sticks it in their pocket and leaves. Um, so that's a, if that is indeed what happened, it's a pretty serious breach. But one last point, Maria, um, we also don't know how much of these materials are actually true. And I think that's a, a very important thing to say, because I, I find often in the media a lot of the reporting about intel agencies, it's, you know, like it's, a, you know, the, a diktat, you know, from, from on high that it's the only eternal truth. And that's just not the case. Mm. Uh, so there's a lot we need to know about this story. But one thing's for sure. Um, these kinds of breaches are very damaging. They can be dangerous to our sources, and uh, the administration needs to, to get on this ASAP. And they, they seem to be concerned, but, but they need, everybody needs to be very concerned about this. It's a serious issue. I mean, there were, there were papers regarding Russia, regarding Ukraine and its ability to uh, be successful in the face of the aggression from Russia. How damaging do you think what was in there uh, and, and is in there? Uh, has been. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I only know what I'm reading in the newspapers, okay. but, you know, a lot of it wasn't really a surprise to me, Maria. I mean, is it a surprise that Ukraine needs munitions? Uh, is it a surprise that, you know, 
uh, public reports about the head of Mossad giving his people license to go participate in protests. That was publicly reported. Okay. I mean, is South Korea going to stop, you know, cooperating with us because of a leak? No. Is it helpful? No, it isn't. But yeah. I don't think, you know, after it blows over, that it's fundamentally going to change the relationship with the Israels and the South Koreas of the world. Uh, Mary, a quick question on our adversaries. I've got a letter here this morning to the EU high representative from the GOP uh, regarding the European Union's decision not to designate Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organization, which is something I know Mike Pompeo and, and the Trump administration uh, tried hard to get the Europeans to designate the Iranian leadership as a terrorist organization. Your reaction to that and, and, and just, you know, the, the general provocation that we continue to see from communist China and its impact on America. Oh, that's interesting, right? Because Brussels has been rather schizophrenic. They're getting better on China, but not on Iran. Um, the Europeans do historically a lot more business with Iran than the United States has done. I recall, you know, French energy companies going in and, and doing business with Tehran. Um, it's just going to take time. And it t frankly, Maria, it takes U.S. leadership to lean on these countries and get them on board uh, with the right agenda, which is to recognize that this is a, a terrorist state that is fomenting violence, not just against its own people, um, not just uh, aiming to wipe Israel off the map, but that, that, that is threatening people here in the United States. I mean, yeah. recall, there's an Iranian activist in Brooklyn who was targeted by Iran-backed thugs. Um, you know, they're in our hemisphere. Uh, they but by had the way, there's an attack. X on the back of Mike Pompeo America. right now, right? I mean, there's an X on the yeah, back of it, Mike well, Pompeo yes, right it, exactly. Another uh, former high-ranking U.S. official. So, you know, we tend to talk about these things like they're halfway around the world. But I, what I'm always telling clients is that's the wrong way to look at it. Um, these dangers are here. And the weaker that we are, the less U.S. deterrence that we have around the world, the more chaos you're going to have. Yeah. And the more that's going to impact markets, whether it's, you know, commodity markets or, you know, whether it's, you know, exposure to China, et cetera. Yeah. You know, people have to pay attention to geopolitics politics today in a way that they just never had to even a couple of years yeah. ago. It has to be a part of your analysis today. Well, we'll keep a spotlight on it. Mary, it's good to talk with you. Thanks so much.